working in the family furniture business. And so I'm actually an engineer by trade. So I'm an industrial engineer. My background is manufacturing. And I always wanted to make furniture just like my daddy. But unfortunately, I'm the only girl. So I wasn't encouraged to participate, to participate in the family business. So instead, I went to work at Ford GM. And here in Phoenix, I work for American Express. And uh, after about 16 years in the corporate world, I decided that I wanted to do something that was a little bit more gratifying, which was join the family business. So this is our first and only retail operation. We've manufactured, like I said, for about 40 years based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And me living here in the Phoenix metropolitan area, Phoenix is a really growing city. And uh, the style of furniture that we have is not really something that's very prevalent here in Phoenix. It's more of a, you know, upscale, sophisticated, urban type of showing that we have here. And uh, I took about five years to plan everything out and to figure out what we're going to sell and where we want to be. And in the fall of 2007, we opened Nyla Simone Home. And uh, Nyla is my niece, and Simone is my daughter. I see. So you were planning it in 2002, when you started planning it. And you opened mm -hmm. in 2007. So yes. You started planning in the midst of a boom. And yes. you opened at the beginning of a recession. What was that like? I'm a, like I said, I'm an engineer, so I'm a planner. And, you know, you always plan best case, worst case scenario. We could not have ever anticipated things being as bad as they were between 2007 and 2009. So within our first year of business, gas was approaching $4 a gallon. That's something that we did not include in our business model. So um, it's been a lot. It's been a challenging journey, but we seem to have weathered the storm. And I'm very proud of that. And I think one of the things that has helped us is the fact that we're all very analytical here. So we uh, analyze and forecast and do those type of things. But it's been very challenging, to say the least. What kinds of things? Could you point to specific things that you did in those you know, hardest hit years of the recession that allowed you to keep the doors open, or, whereas thousands of other businesses that were even established, let alone startup businesses that were brand new, didn't make it? I think one of the things that has helped us the most is the amount of editorial that we've received. So, you know, you hear all the time that when, when the economy is down, you should advertise. And it's hard to advertise when you're a small business and you have zero brand recognition in a new bar, in a new market. So for us, we really worked hard to garner editorial with some of the local magazines and with the local newspaper and then on some of the local TV shows. And um, fortunately, we have a great product. We have a fabulous service. And what we do is unique. We have a very unique story, and that has helped us tremendously. I think, you know, the guerrilla advertising, we blog, we use Twitter, we use Facebook. Those things, you know, on a small marketing budget really help you a whole lot. And then we did hire a professional marketing company to design our website because I do firmly believe that is if your brother-in-law made your website, then you're probably going to get my brother-in-law made my website. So, What would you tell a small business that, you know, starting out right now um, that doesn't know where to go, how to get their name out there, how to get you know, recognition, how, what, what things can, can somebody regular person do starting a business to get that kind of name recognition? I think one of the biggest things they can do is to reach out to some of the local newspapers. And like we, we write a, we have a standing column with our local newspaper, which is an excellent way to get your name out there and to establish yourself as an expert in what you're doing. So we have lots of customers or lots of traffic that is driven by the fact that we write for our community newspaper, we write a standing, a standing monthly column, which is a question and answer about furnishings and interior design. And people really appreciate what we have to say because it pertains directly to them in this particular community. And going back to the furniture itself, um, obviously it's not furniture you're going to pick up at a big box retail store. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so how are you able to you know, sell a $1,000 couch uh, $2,000 table in the midst of a, of a recession, what, what then, how, from a business model, how are you able to kind of keep the product high-end when people aren't necessarily buying a lot of high-end? You know, I think, you know, on a low-end, somebody's always going to be cheaper than you. So there's not a lot of room to compete on that low-end. And then for us, we really believe in what we sell. So I'm, I'm not going to show anything in this showroom that I'm not going to have in my own home. For me, um, buying American-made quality products is very important. 
And so our clientele has a very similar mindset. So we cater to a very discerning client. We cater to people who are buying pieces to last. They're not, you know, they're not the type of people who are going to buy a sofa for three hundred dollars today. They can next year they'll buy another one. These are people who are buying heirloom quality pieces, pieces that are investment pieces for them that their, I guess, their family is going to use and enjoy for years to come. So for those type of clients, they find you. Those type of people value what we have to offer because there is value in buying quality American-made furniture, and we have been able to do a really good job of attracting those people. So our store has become more of a destination place for those type of people. And the idea is that you don't just use it for a few years, a few decades, you use it for a few generations. Exactly. These, when you sell furniture that your children would see it in your home and, and then maybe 25 years from now, it'll be in their home. So, and we're very proud of that fact. Are you gonna be participating in the job fair? Yes. Of course, um, I uh, have utilized the services of SCORE and believe very strongly in what SCORE has to offer, so I will definitely be at the Yelp there on Friday. What kinds of things do people pick up from that? What kinds of things do you pick up from that kind of you know, um, event? Um, for me personally, um, I am also a graduate of the AIM program which is a program, a two-year business mentoring and development program that's sponsored by APS. So for me, I have made wonderful connections and I have found fabulous resources through SCORE. Um, I, have SCORE I have two SCORE advisors um, through the SBDC, the Small Business Development Center. Um, just the, the budgeting and the financial pieces, anything from how you use QuickBooks to how you actually set up a Facebook page and what are the benefits of Twitter. So I think the Yacht Fair is just a wonderful place to start for anybody who's looking for resources to grow or start a business. 